Hello, everybody. The World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, just released a report within the last week on the, green, the main greenhouse gases and uh, what they're doing, their, their, their growth rates and uh, trends. And of course, uh, these reports, as I've mentioned, are coming out fast and furious just before the COP is about to begin. COP28 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates starts um, on December 30th, I believe. But now I'm going to talk about the results from the WMO report. Okay, so this is the main finding. And they publish this um, every year just before the COP. And on the, we've got CO2, we've got the, temp, the, the CO2 rise, we've got methane, where it flattens off around, from around 2000 to 2007, and then it increases at ever faster rates. And we've got uh, nitrous oxide N2O here. So these are the trend lines. And if you take the derivative or the slope of these curves, um, this is, um, you know, after you filter out the seasonal variation, um, then you get the derivative is the slope is the red line here um, for, for each of CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide. So CO2 has, has uh, the maximum year when it rose was, looks like about 2016, reached about, uh, that's about what, 3.2, 3.3 parts per million per year. There's some fluctuation. Um, and uh, it's still increasing, but there is year-to-year -year fluctuation. So the trend is very strongly upwards. This is the methane, um, where the growth rate actually in parts per billion per year, it flattened off to zero from about 2000 to 2007. And then it's been strongly rising and it's reaching, uh, you know, record high rates. It was about 17 and a half parts per billion per year. Um, I guess that's in 2021 or 2022. Okay, and the nitrous oxide growth rate in parts per billion per year has also been increasing strongly. And I'll talk about the global warming potential of these um, gases in a minute. I've got a chart for that. Okay, so this is the, the World Meteorological Organization, WMO. Um, greenhouse gas concentrations hit record high again, published November 15, 2023. So record levels of heat trapping gases mean further temperature increase. The carbon budget is shrinking fast. When it says carbon budget, we're talking about carbon budget for 1.5. Well, it's negative now, isn't it? Carbon budget for two, you know, shrinking very, very fast. Climate change impacts include more extreme weather, sea level rise, et cetera, et cetera. And there's something called the Global Greenhouse Gas Watch, and they're expanding it to get more data on greenhouse gases. So the abundance of these heat trapping greenhouse gases once again reached a new record last year. There's no end in sight to the rising trend. Okay. For CO2, which is the most important greenhouse gas, in 2022, it was a full 50% above the pre-industrial era for the first time. Okay, it reached actually 424 parts per million recently. That's, a, that's about 50% higher than the 280 parts per million, which is what we saw in previous um, interglacials. And during previous glacials, we had about 180 parts per million. So CO2 has varied between 180 and 280 for a long, long time. And now, of course, we're well out of the range. We're 50% higher than the 280 number. The rate of growth of CO2 concentrations was slightly lower than the previous year. You know, you can see that from the, the, the uh, you know, it was, pre it was higher in some previous years. But... There's natural short-term variations in the carbon cycle. New emissions from industrial activities continues to rise. Methane concentrations also grew and levels of nitrous oxide, <coughs> excuse me, the third main, main gas. So the highest year on year increase on record 
Okay, um, so this greenhouse bulletin is published just before the COPs each year to inform the United Nations climate change negotiation, or COP28 in this case. Despite decades of warning from the scientific community, thousands of pages of reports, dozens of climate conferences, we're still heading in the wrong direction. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're on a pathway, of course, to increases in temperatures well above Paris Agreement targets. There's more extreme weather, intense heat, rainfall, ice melt, sea level rise, ocean heat and acidification. The socioeconomic and environmental costs will soar. We must reduce the consumption of fossil fuels as a matter of urgency, and we're clearly not doing that. Now, for the total CO2 emissions, just under half, say about 45% of the CO2 emissions, they remain in the atmosphere. About a quarter is absorbed by the ocean and about 30% by land ecosystems such as forests. There's considerable year-to-year -year variability. As long as emissions continue to rise, CO2 will keep accumulating in the atmosphere, leading to global temperature rise and that earth energy imbalance. CO2 lives a long time in the atmosphere, so temperature levels already observed will persist for several decades, even if emissions are rapidly reduced to net zero. Okay, so this is a you know, very, very important point. Um, that quarter that's absorbed by the ocean, that's in jeopardy as the ocean temperature rises and as the oceans uh, stratify and there's less CO2 uh, able to be absorbed. Um, the 30% by land ecosystems, you know, as there are more and more wildfires and dying back of the Amazon rainforest, there's the carbon sinks on land are decreasing. So all of these things are head going in the wrong direction. The last time the Earth experienced a comparable concentration of CO2, that 424 parts per million, was three to five million years ago. Temperatures on the planet were two to three degrees, two to three degrees Celsius warmer. Sea level was 10 to 20 meters higher than now. And I just uh, did a video on the cryosphere and that 20 meters of sea level rise that seems to be built in, you know, for a two degree Celsius. Um, uh, warming. Okay, so this global greenhouse gas watch um, is going to be expanded by the WMO to try to account for both human activities, but also natural sources and sinks. And, uh, you know, it's funny, these articles still talk about limiting global warming to well below two, and aiming for 1.5, well, 2023 was 1.5 already, 1.54 it looks like, in 2023. A couple of days last week we exceeded 2 degrees Celsius, but when they talk about um, those temperatures, they don't really define, uh, you know, whether it's a yearly average, whether it's a 5-year moving average, 10-year moving average, you know, meteorological or climatological average it needs 30 years, right? So they can fudge with those averaging factors and say, well, we haven't reached there yet, but we're, we're essentially at 1.5 right now. Okay, um, and uh, they talk about some of the things that are important for greenhouse gases that we need more info on, like feedback mechanisms, Right? There's multiple feedback loops, like increased carbon emission from soils, decreased carbon uptake by oceans due to changing climate, either a rewiring of the ocean circulation, the AMOC, or a warming of the southern oceans, making them less likely, less able to absorb CO2. Um, all these things happening. So there's tipping points in the climate system, potential dieback of the Amazon rainforest, slowing of the ocean circulations, destabilization of large ice sheets, those are all tipping points. Um, there's substantial variability driven by natural processes in for these green, the, the, the major three greenhouse gases. You know, there's things like the El Nino, which is going on that can affect things on a short term. 
Um, and there's other gases that are that are um, that have much higher global warming potential than CO2. Uh, and uh, so let's have a look at the so th there's the annual greenhouse gas index. So the warming effect on our climate called radiative forcing by long lived greenhouse gases, it increased by 49 percent between 1990 and 2022. CO2 accounted for about 78 percent of this increase. And these are some of the trends for CO2 methane and nitrous oxide. 2022 global mean abundance 417.9, 1923 that's parts per billion, N2O 335.8 parts per billion. The abundance relative to 1750, interesting. All right, 1750 was the original baseline and before it was switched to 1850 to 1900 or 1880 to 1920. CO2 has reached, you know, 150% higher than the 1750 number of 280 parts per billion. Methane is up 264%, nitrous oxide up 124%. The absolute in, increase, 2.2 um, ppm. Um, CO2, 16 parts per billion methane and 1.4 parts per billion for N2O. And in terms of a relative increase, it's highest for methane, next for CO2 and then N2O. And that mean annual absolute increase over the past decade, about 2.5 parts per million per year for CO2, just over 10 parts per billion per year for methane and nitrous oxide, 1.05. And again, you can see these numbers here. They're all they're all in this plot. Okay, um, and uh, basically, you know, it talks a little bit about CO two and about methane and about nitrous oxide. For example, you know, methane accounts for about sixteen percent of the warming effect of long-lived greenhouse gases. About 40% of methane is emitted into the atmosphere by natural sources like wetlands and termites. About 60% comes from anthropogenic sources. Um, and this is in general, but you look at the UN Nesbitt work um, where there's more and more methane coming from wetlands and the isotope, the, the, the carbon, the del 13 uh, isotopic ratio, carbon 13 to carbon 12 is dropping indicating that there seems to be more and more from wetlands as opposed to from anthropogenic sources so this ratio i think is being shifted in in uh you know hot, much much higher for natural sources which is a big concern um, nitrous oxide is about seven percent of the radiative forcing of long-lived greenhouse gases about uh, 60 percent of it is from natural sources and 40 percent from anthropogenic sources Okay, it comes from thing comes from the oceans, the soils, biomass burning, fertilizer use, and various industrial processes. Okay, okay, so uh, so this is a very important um, update yearly, and this is the key uh, figure which I show you here, and you can see um, the rates, the growth rates are, are what to keep an eye out on. There is fluctuation, but the trends are all getting higher and higher. You know, methane is a big concern. You know, what's methane doing? Okay, um, I got some images. Um, if you Google, uh, Google images and search for greenhouse gases um, and COPs, you can get a bunch of charts sort of like this. This shows the climate conferences through the years and the level of CO2 in parts per million rising. And like I said, now it's 400, it reached 424. This is another image, Go, comes up, goes data up to COP24. Um, and I think I've got one, this is, this is up to COP24. <laughs> this one here, it goes to COP26. 
Glasgow, and then last year was COP27, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt, and then this year, of course, COP28 in Dubai. So you can see the trend, you know, despite all of these climate conferences, the trend for CO2 in our atmosphere is going higher and higher and higher. In fact, the curve it's following is 2.4 parts per million per year in the 2010s. It was increasing two parts per million per year in the 2000s, and it was increasing 1.5 parts per million per year in the 1990s. So the curve is bending upwards. It's heading the wrong direction, despite all of the climate conferences and everything we're doing. And I just wanted to mention the, um, the global warming potentials um, from the IPCC, the, the six assessment report. And this is the summary right here. So, so basically CO2 is pegged as one. This is the AR4, five and six for the hundred year time period. And you can see that methane you know, for the longest time, people said it was 25, the global warming potential relative to CO2. And then in AR5, it became 20. Uh, well, in, in, in AR4, it was with feedback not included, it was 25. And then 20, uh, feedback not included in 2014, 28, and feedback included 34. Um, and then now it's dipped back down a bit. And then the uh, numbers for the 20-year time period, you know, you can also see how the numbers has been increasing 86 times. That's, so, I, I mean, these are the numbers I remember, 34 times for 100 years and 86 times for 20 years. And there's some, you know, updates to those numbers, slight changes. And then N2O was always about 300, but, but it seems to have dipped a little bit in the latest um, AR6 report. This is on a 100-year time period and also on a 20-year uh, time period. Okay, so those are uh, ways to, you know, they allow you to basically generate, you know, when you talk about a CO2 equivalent, it's CO2 radiative effect plus methane multiplied by the global warming potential plus nitrous oxide multiplied by the global warming potential, et cetera, to get an equivalent CO2 level, um, which is a very important um, you know, concept. Okay, so so basically, you know, we've had all these COPs. CO2 is rising at ever faster rates in our atmosphere. This is the yearly report from the WMO put out just to uh, provide data for the COP28 conference. And this is the key finding. This is the key um, figure, the most important thing um, from the w World Meteorological organization um, report on greenhouse gases you know what what the main greenhouse gases are doing and uh, like I say you know the trends are strongly upward for all of them and you know methane what's we got to figure out what's going on with methane because if we are in a termination zero event um, which uh, you you and Nesbitt, Nisbet was uh, speculating and show some data, then this is going to increase, this is going to continue to increase, you know, at very, very fast rates. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Uh, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks, and uh, goodbye for now.